Good morning and welcome everyone. We're so glad you're with us here at Nativity. Um, I'm delighted today to be behind the camera because we have Reverend Lynn and her family, uh, Carl and Kelly, with us leading our second Sunday family service. If you'd like to find the bulletin and follow along, you'll find it on nativityonthehill.org and you can download the bulletin on our homepage. Welcome. Good morning. I want to remind everyone before we open with our first song that um, during our prayers, if you have anything on your heart or on your mind um, that you would like us to pray for this morning, to type it into the chat window on Facebook and um, Kelly and Carl will read those off uh, during our prayers. But our first song is This Is The Day. Thanks be to God. The parable of the sower. This parable brings up so many images in my mind uh, and so many different thoughts. So I'll try to sum them up somewhat coherently. The first image, of course, is the ground, the soil, the terrain, the type of place that the, that the seed is thrown. We think of the rocky, 
rocky soil and um, the, the hot sun scorches everything. The path where the birds come and take the seeds. Uh, the ones that are thrown into the thorns and are choked away. And <clears throat> then the good soil. And any of us who have ever been to different parts of the world or even parts of our state or county uh, know that different soil uh, receives things differently. Uh, my sister and I both out of college joined the Peace Corps and we're twins, so it was all in the same period of time. She went to Mali in West Africa and I went to Costa Rica in Central America. And as you can imagine, um, we were both we both did agricultural product projects. She started gardens in um, the edge of the Sahara Desert, and I was in Corte Madera, I mean, not Corte Madera, in Costa Rica, where they, they joke that if you put a broomstick into the ground, it will sprout and turn into a tree, because the soil there is so fertile. So it was the exact opposite of where my sister was. Um, but what was surprising is that they do grow crops in Mali. It's a lot more difficult, but they do. Um, peanuts grew. They had great peanut butter. Um, millet, which is not something we're used to, uh, that's what they ate regularly. Um, and of course, in Costa Rica, you, you get pretty much everything that loved sun and loved water. So um, those two images for me stand out when I think of what the ground can produce. And when we think about how that translates into human life and hearing the word of God, we start thinking of ourselves as what kind of soil are we? What kind of terrain do I provide for God's word? And so we can get caught up in that. And I, the one thing I will say is that I don't think we're always one type of terrain. Sometimes we're very rich soil and we hear and understand God's word. And sometimes we're distracted. We're on the path and, you know, we're those birds just letting everything go. We're just walking without care. Um, sometimes we are um, not paying attention. We don't absorb. We don't allow God's word to enter and plant its seeds. Um, the amazing thing is, though, this parable is not actually called the parable of the soil or the parable of the terrain. This parable is about the sower. So who is sowing? It's God. And though God may find a path or a rocky soil or thorns or rich soil, God is indiscriminately throwing it everywhere, spreading the word, spreading God's love everywhere, knowing that something will take root. And at some point, some of it might disappear, but God knows that God will keep planting. And so when we think of ourselves, we shouldn't just think of ourselves as terrain or soil, because we are called to be God's hands in this world. We are called to be like the sower and sow God's word in this world. And what we know is that God indiscriminately will sow seeds will spread the word, the love, everywhere and to everyone, indiscriminately. And we are called to do the same. In this world that is so difficult right now, where there is illness, there is pain, there is death, there is discrimination, there is injustice. We are called to spread God's word. To do that wholeheartedly, not just to the soil that is rich, that we think will hear our word. But if we are truly doing God's work, we will 
will spread the word to everyone. In all situations, let us be God's word. Let's not pick and choose who we love, but know that our words are meant as loving representations of the God who loves everyone at all times. It's not easy to love everyone. I know that um, recently I, I, I go on Facebook, and you all are watching this on Facebook, but I have um, someone that I love dearly who believes completely differently than me. And on Facebook, that's the only place we really interact. And I had someone block me because they didn't want to see my, my friend's comments. She said, I love you, but I can't read that. And I thought, wow, okay. I love conversation. Because if we don't converse, if we don't open our hearts to those who see things differently, we have a pretty myopic view. And so we're all called to love and to spread God's word, even when it's difficult. We don't know how it will be received. That's up to them, the hearer. But if we are going to be God's people in this world, we need to openly and honestly share what God teaches us. So the parable of the sower is more about sowing than the soil it enters. It's about generosity, carefree generosity of spreading God's word and God's love to everyone, regardless of what we might think they will think. But if we speak God's word, then we are doing the work we are put here to do as Christians. And to recognize that it won't always be well received. But you know what? Jesus experienced that a lot more than we do. And he did it anyways. So let us remember that the terrain may be different wherever we go. But to be secure in what we preach, what we, what we speak, and what we proclaim in God's loving word. We are going to sing a song, Father, I Adore You. And as we sing the song, if you have any prayers that are in your hearts or on your minds, please type them into the chat uh, on our Facebook page. for all in San Quentin, the prisoners and those who work there. God, hear our prayer. Uh, prayers for a successful vaccine sooner rather than later. We can all be together again in person and share big hugs and blessings. God, hear our prayer.
Prayers for Nathaniel. Grant hear our prayer. Prayers for school decision makers and teachers with difficult decisions to make. And pray for the health of less coolers. God, hear our prayer. Pray for strength for the doctors and nurses to continue their difficult work in this overwhelming time. God, hear our prayer. Prayers for Larry and Diane. God, hear our prayer. Prayers for this congregation, remembering especially Ruth, Carissa, Margie, Juliet, Mary, Myrna, Dan, Sybil, Donna, and Jim Gaw. God, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have commended themselves to our prayers, remembering especially Colton James, Ellen Sigmund, Catherine Christian, Ed Bates, Daniel Rose, Marco Hoy, John Yankovich, Thomas Klinger, Marge Pappas, Mary O'Dell, Mary Peel, Hal, Jake Nelson, Jill Bregan, Doug Romano, Fred Alexander, Barbara Hoffman, Michael Winship, Eileen and Leonard Greenwood, Polly Essinger, Linda Bowker, Sarah Keen, and Jose and Echo Gonzalez. God, God hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who've died, remembering especially Oscar Colegio, Robert Gonzalez, and Kathy Perkinson. God, God hear our prayer. prayer. Above all, we thank you for Jesus' teachings to help us and his spirit to guide us. Amen. And now, it's time for our confession. And so, if you have a stone at home, hold it in your hand. If you um, want to put your hand over your heart, you can do that too. Um, can we deflect the stones here? Let us pray. God have mercy. Christ have mercy. We have done things against you and against each other. We've done things against you and against, against each other. other. We have not done the things you want us to do. We have not, not done the things we want, want us to do. We are truly sorry and we want you to forgive us. We are truly sorry and we want you to forgive us. Help us to walk in the way of your love. Help us to walk in the way of your love. Through the waters of our baptism, God forgives us and sets us free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. And the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. I have just a couple announcements for today. Um, one is that if you are a family with children, um, there are two Episcopal camps that are operating uh, this summer virtually. One is Red Camp at Bishop's Ranch, and the other is Camp at St. Dorothy's Rest. Um, my boys went to St. Dorothy's Rest and just loved it there, and I watched some of the videos from last week of camp. The campfire songs are just as I remember them. 
there's a crew of camp counselors who are living at the uh, Dorothy's Rest and, and leading the virtual program. It's free, and the details are in the back of your bulletin today and on our website. Um, the bread camp at Bishop's Ranch, have you gone? I'll, I'll, I'll give a plug for that. I actually went from the time I was in eighth grade through college and I started working as a counselor, and then I've worked as a chaplain, and my kids have been going there, so yes. If the last in camps, they can't be beat. Really, really lovely. So um, if you have children or grandchildren, um, the camps this summer are free and virtual, and, and we encourage you to participate. The other notes, uh, we will have a coffee hour immediately after the service on Zoom, and the details are in the bulletin and on the website. And then uh, just a reminder that when you come to this service, all who receive Holy Eucharist virtually receive the full benefits of the sacrament by coming with the intention of being united with God and one another. We will, with thanksgiving, receive your offerings um, using the donate button on our website, or you can send us a check. Thank you so much. Let us give God, let us give God the gifts of our love. Jesus, your son. 
On the night before he died, Jesus was having a meal with his friends. He took bread from the table. He gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. When the meal was ended, Jesus took a cup filled with wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us proclaim our faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Most holy God, because you love us, you invite us to come to your table. Fill us with the joy of the Holy Spirit as we receive the body and blood of your Son. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us once again through the bread and wine of communion. Be with us also when we leave the church today, when we are at work, when we are at home, when we are at school, when we are with friends. Bring us to your table again. Amen. Amen. And now we have our blessing, which at this service we love to do in community. And right now we can't do it in community, but we will do it to one another um, as best we can. So we sing our song, May the Lord Bless You. And you can bless anyone who's near you, um, in your family, worshiping with you, or um, bless the camera on your computer. And uh, we will know that everyone is together.
Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.